In June of 2023, my wife and I set out on our honeymoon to the island of St. Martin. St. Martin is made up from two countries, with Dutch St. Martin to the south and French St. Martin to the north. We plan on exploring both sides of the island, but we'll be staying in Simpson Bay on the Dutch side. The approach to the airport is really neat as we fly right over Maho Beach. After landing, we were met by our car rental company right at the airport. They had our car waiting for us right out front. After jumping into our rental, we're off to our first spot, Tortuga Maho for lunch. Tortuga Maho is a great little restaurant right on Maho Beach. The food is filling, tastes great, and is reasonably priced, all things considering. Since it's located right by Maho Beach, it means it's a perfect location to watch planes land at the airport, or even take your photo as the planes land, which is a tourist favorite activity. Tortuga Maho was one of our favorite restaurants on this trip. We actually came out three different times on our trip. After lunch, it was time to check into our Airbnb. We stayed at the Tradewind Apartments overlooking Simpson Bay. Our number eight apartment was on the upper floor. The room features a kitchenette, good for making breakfast, a living area with a view, and a wall-mounted TV. But the top feature of this apartment was the balcony view. The bedroom features a king-size bed and access to the same balcony and view. The property also features a common area with a pool, well-kept flowers, and a close-up view of Simpson Bay Beach. <sighs> this right here is like the money view right here. After checking in, we took a drive to find a grocery store, but pulled over on this scenic overlook on Coal Bay Hill overlooking Phillipsburg. It was on this hill that I saw a number of animals, including goats, cats, and even a pig all by the side of the road. After heading to the store and picking up supplies for the week, we headed out to Maho Plaza for dinner. There were a lot of restaurants to choose from in this area, but we ended up eating at Sublime Restaurant, which is a very modern and decadently decorated restaurant with great food. After dinner, we headed to the Moon Bar rooftop next door for dancing. After coming back and sleeping for the night, we spent our first full day out on the beach. This is Mullet Bay Beach. On this beach, we had crashing waves, rock formations, beach bar, restaurants, and chairs that you could rent from the restaurants. Instead of renting a chair from each spot each day, we rented our own chairs for the week that we brought with us from sxm-services.com slash packlight. Mullet Bay Beach was probably my favorite beach that we visited on the island. Not only did it have picturesque beauty from the beach, but the rocky surface of parts of the area made it fun to snorkel around too. <laughs> That afternoon, we visited another nearby beach that required a little bit of walking to gain access to, Kupakoi Beach. This beach is a bit more secluded, and at this point of the day, there were not many people around, though we did see a group of men swimming as we walked the area. For dinner, we decided to eat at Palapa Grill. This was probably our fanciest meal that we did on our trip, and it didn't disappoint. The restaurant is semi-outside with a yurt-style structure. The menu is a mix of French and Caribbean dishes. While the prices are on the higher side, the food tastes great and the meal really hit the spot. We topped the night off with live music at nearby Soggy Dollar Bar, which like Palapa, was also in Simpson Bay. The next day we planned to spend a lot of time on the French side of the island. This meant quite a bit of driving from Simpson Bay. Since I'm on the topic, I want to talk a bit about driving on the island. If you want to explore the whole island and see whatever you want whenever you want, then driving is the way to go. The other good thing is that rental cars can be had for very reasonable rates. We got our Nissan from Hardy's rental car for just $225 for the week. 
But driving on the island can be very stressful. The roads are narrow and were laid when not a lot of people were driving. But now, most people have cars. This means there's a lot of traffic, especially from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Street parking is the norm, which makes the roads even narrower. It seems like the rules of the road are not as concrete, black and white here. If there's a traffic jam, don't be surprised if you see people driving into oncoming traffic to skip ahead. I wouldn't recommend doing this as a visitor, but just be ready for it. Stopping in the middle of the road to let on and off passengers is a normal occurrence, as is parking on the sidewalks. In addition to keeping an eye out for cars, bikes, and pedestrians, you also need to keep an eye out for a variety of animals that aren't scared of oncoming traffic. Oh no, little doggy. Get out the road. One mistake you should avoid making if you are renting a car is getting a big 4x4 like a Jeep. Not only are they not needed, they are much harder to park. I would say get the smallest car that you can while renting. But there's also a lot of beauty that you can find while driving. But that may be something that the passengers enjoy more, as the driver will need to be paying full attention to the road. After about a 30 minute drive, we found ourselves in Grand Casse, on the French side of the island. Our first stop was the Rainbow Cafe, overlooking the Grand Casse beach. The food is fancy and high priced, but it's really the view that you have here that attracts people. About a 20 minute drive north of Grand Casse sits Anz Marsal. This is where we spent our evening. Getting to Anz Marsal requires driving up some serious hills on some rough and narrow roads. But the destination is well worth it. Wow. Whoa. Do you want to park on the side? After parking, there's a little bit of a walk to get to the beach, but the beach here is great, especially during sunset. But we're sunset at Anz Marsal. Yeah. Yeah. Sunset. <gasps> Very. Oh, they're attracted. I got them. I got. I got video of them. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. He touched me. <laughs> he got me. Yeah. Maybe they're used to people feeding them. We don't have any bread or anything. No. You know, we can see like the bottom with water and fish yeah. are coming up. It's also nice to like have less people on the beach. Yeah. And see these beautiful fish. <laughs> They're this still there. Down? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. They're just circling us. They're circling you? They're circling you too. <laughs> Until you start moving, then they kind of like go out a little bit, but they there's one right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about barracuda. <laughs> or something was chasing it. Something that was a like a, a I caught it. For dinner, we went to Cynthia's Talk of the Town Lolo Barbecue. This spot is often packed and they grill the meats right in front of you. Cynthia's has a large barrel grill where most of the cooking is done. The food is solid and it's a filling meal. The prices are pretty decent as well considering the location. The next day we headed to Bay Rouge Beach, which is also on the French side of the island, but it's not that far from Simpson Bay. This is a beach that I absolutely loved. There was a lot of rock formations that could be explored. I had forgotten my snorkeling gear the day we went, but really wish that I had it as I swam around. The waters are calm here, with not many big waves. In the evening, we headed to Philipsburg, the capital of the Dutch side of the island, which is about a 30 minute drive from Simpson Bay in traffic. We parked at the marina and headed towards the famous boardwalk, which is an area that gets extremely busy when there's a cruise ship in. We did our visit to Philipsburg at a time when there was not any cruise ships in, and mostly just locals in the area. My tip for those traveling is that it seems for the most part the further you walk away from the cruise ship landing, the better the prices get. So if you're looking for a cheap spot to relax, head east on the boardwalk. We stopped for drinks at Shell Jen's restaurant for a great atmosphere and great prices. The next day, we headed up into the mountains to Lottery Farm. Lottery Farm is a private nature reserve with a pool, restaurant, hiking trails, and zipline courses. It's a great place to come to relax and have a meal. You can easily spend most of the day here. Yay! Where are 
here. No. That lottery farm. We came on a day when a cruise ship was in port in Phillipsburg, and some of the cruise ship passengers even came all the way out here to spend their day. There's a lot to do and see here, including taking a hike to the highest point of the island and several other beautiful scenic lookouts. Make sure you pack a couple bottles of water if you are planning to do the hike, because it can be exhausting. Grant, you made it. I can't believe. <laughs> it's pretty high up, you see the water. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. It makes me even thirstier. <laughs> We made it back to our Airbnb in time to watch the cruise ship depart from port and head out to open waters. The next day, we decided to go back to Ans Marcel Beach, but this time during the daytime. After leaving Ans Marcel at the end of the day, we headed to Fort Louis, a historic fort in Marigot, to watch the sunset. There's a little bit of a hike up some stairs to make it to the fort from the parking area, but it really isn't that bad. Fort Louis is a popular place to come and watch the sunset, and it's really easy to see why here. For dinner, we headed back to Simpson Bay to Topper's Bar, where we saw a dance performance, followed by karaoke. For our final day, we mostly stayed at our Airbnb and just relaxed by the pool, just like this iguana did. There are so many things that make St. Martin a special place, and there really does seem to be something for everyone. One of the things that was really memorable to me was seeing some of the wildlife on the island. And before you knew it, it was time to come home. And that was our trip, taken in June of 2023.